Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to uh, another game from Steinitz Memorial, a tournament online organized by the platform Chess24.com and FIDE. Uh, this is Blitz tournament, so the players have 3 minutes and 2 seconds incrementation per move. And today I would like to show you the game from day 2, where Magnus Carlsen, current world champion, his actual ranking in Blitz 2887, he is 29 years old grandmaster from Norway and he's gonna play as black and his opponent Daniel Dubov very creative I just show yesterday winning position uh, winning attack uh, you know uh, mating net by Daniel Dubov very creative one of the most creative uh, players nowadays uh, if you haven't seen that game check over there uh, I just you know posted that yesterday and today Daniel Dubov uh, gonna face Magnus Carlsen current world champion uh, Daniel has a ranking 2770 that's his bliss ranking uh, he's 24 years old still young and he's gonna play as white so without further ado let's see what happened in the game Daniel Dubov open with knight on f3 so Zucker tort opening I know uh, you think it's ready however more precise ready would be after d5 playing c4 uh, c4 and knight f3 is the typical for ready however Johannes Zucker tort started to play knight on f3 with different uh, configurations so that would be more precise uh, at least in my opinion and of some you know um, chess websites we have knight on f6 as you see no ready this time uh, we're gonna go for some another variations we have c4 g6 knight on c3 and now bishop g7 we have e4 d6 and now d4 so uh, all the opening was transposed to the king's indian defense uh, we have normal variation and now castle by black uh, and here white have to decide what to do the most harmonic the most you know popular move is bishop on e2 and that's actually the best move in the position uh, other moves uh, h3 also a uh, very good move because it takes g4 uh, from black so for example black cannot go with the bishop on g4 but also can't jump with the knight if the bishop on e3 is developed so uh, also very very nice move however in this position we have bishop on d3 by daniel dubov uh, and carlsen immediately goes for bishop on g4 pinning the knight and he definitely want to exchange the knight for the bishop so dubov retreat uh, and now uh, taking the knight is not so great as bishop could take on f3 and support the march of the pawns okay this is a uh, pretty nice support and would be very very dangerous so um, magnus carlsen plays some other variation knight f on d7 uh, and okay we have bishop on e3 normal development and now e5 uh, c5 is also possible it was played before but magnus play e5 uh, it's the known idea however in this position it was not played yet on the top level so uh, we could say that is some kind of novelty but all these structures of course are well known so uh, no surprise here we have d5 and of course uh, now we have the pawn chain very short for now but but uh, the player is gonna play somehow around that so uh, what is the idea for white definitely before c5 continue attack on the queen side for black f5 this is why the the knight was moved to d7 f5 and then continue attack on the king side so these are typical plans uh, in such a structure pawn structure uh, and here magnus carlsen play a5 prevents any b4 moves so now for example knight can jump very easily to c5 and cannot be attacked by b4 also b4 supporting c5 is not possible very important move and now knight on d2 also a very good move by dubov now forcing actually black to exchange the bishops as you see the bishop has nowhere to go could be supported but it doesn't make much sense so we have bishop on e2 queen on e2 and now 
now f5 very typical plan we have f3 so supporting the pawn uh, on e4 and now knight on a6 as planned uh, and here dubov has to decide what to do he can go for example for the castle he can go for h4 and start the attack on the king side but first he want to move the king on the queen side which is not really easy to attack how would you attack as black um, the king on the queen side so Magnus Carlsen starts with knight a to c5, very nice outpost and uh, the knight can't be attacked, can be attacked by the bishop but it's supported by another knight so there is no problem here. Uh, and king on b1 by Dubov and here a4, uh, maybe with the idea of a3, so uh, if Dubov play for example something like h4 which is totally possible and after a3 just b3 and everything is fine and it's difficult to imagine how to attack white position now okay you can't just play for example c6 because after taking on c6 we, you would have a very big weakness on d6 this could be you know the target for for the attacks uh, and also uh, moves like b5 are not possible because this square actually is controlled three times by white so uh, not easy way uh, to attack however we have a3 by daniel dubov so he makes some space for the king if needed uh, and also he don't really care about jumping um, with the knight here uh, because the knight cannot be very active here it can jump there but uh, without other pieces it cannot coordinate any attack so uh, it's not really dangerous uh, so magnus carlsen play rook on f7 any plans like c6 as i said would be very dangerous create some weaknesses and that's not really great uh, what more uh, magnus could play it's something like f4 making this pawn chain uh, much longer and maybe try to attack this base but uh, it it's not so easy uh, you know to 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 play that it it would take a lot of time probably it would be some idea um, but the position would be very close and very difficult you know to crack so we have rook on f7 and now daniel dubov starts to attack so we have e takes on f5 g takes on f5 and g4 very similar attack like yesterday against mamediarov uh, and here magnus carlsen plays a queen on f6 so bringing the the queen to you know as a, a another defender uh, and also creating this battery which could be uh, dangerous for example if the knight is moved uh, and there would be some moves like e4 that could be uh, you know potential danger so what Dubov did is G takes on F5 so he dislocates the the Queen now uh, Queens go to F5 but also opens uh, the G file so now uh, the King doesn't have much protection which is very very dangerous for Magnus Carlsen uh, and here Queen on C4 would be possible but after exchanging the Knights uh, for example another knight, knight could jump to C5 uh, and that could be very unpleasant so Daniel Dubov uh, plays a king on a2 uh, and actually now he led uh, Magnus Carlsen to jump inside the position and we have queen on c2 uh, but it's not really dangerous because after rook on c1 the queen has to just retreat so uh, we have queen on d3 queen on d3 knight d3 and now rook c on g1 as the rook was under attack uh, and now the rook is the on this open g file which can be very dangerous now uh, magnus carlsen uh, bring the the knight to the game so from the seven rank to c5 and now rook g3 so uh, Dubov already prepares to uh, double the rooks on the g file which looks very very dangerous so Magnus Carlsen plays a king on h8 hiding the king and pinning the bishop uh, and here we have rook h on g1 as planned and bishop on f6 by Magnus Carlsen we have knight d on e4 attacking the knight and the bishop so uh, first we have exchange of the knights uh, and now knight on f4 threatening some forks uh, which could be of course very very unpleasant as these uh, rooks are very happy on the open file so uh, what Daniel Dubov uh, did is exchanging the bishop bishop on f4 we have e takes on f4 and look at this position now first uh, what is better the bishop or the knight knight is on the light square it's very very nice outpost and it would be even better uh, if can jump to e6 
just how to do that the bishop for now controls um, all of that squares on g5 so uh, it's not possible yet but the knight can't be attacked uh, at least can't be attacked by the minor pieces so it's very very powerful piece here uh, the bishop of course uh, looking at b2 but it can't do anything alone so how to bring the rook to attack uh, the knight blocking the way on the open e file so it's not possible and g file uh, is defended by the rooks it's actually you know uh, controlled by the rooks so uh, it's also not possible this way maybe rook uh, maybe this way rook on b6 uh, simply rook on g2 and everything is fine with the position so magnus carlsen has very difficult game very difficult task to do to find the plan for his game we have rook on g4 by daniel dubov and now rook a on f8 and now uh, the pawn is under attack but it shouldn't be taken now because of bishop on e5 then the rooks would would watch at f3 the bishop uh, on h2 so uh, too many targets and uh, black could uh, easily survived it so uh, in this position actually daniel dubov uh, just see that magnus cannot do anything look at the, his uh, pieces these rooks are, are watching on on this pawn so uh, not really great so he just bring the king king on b1 and what to play as black now very very difficult position it's almost the zugzwang it's not like you know any move is losing but it's slightly worsening the position so here magnus carlsen play b6 the move is like it's quite illogical but he doesn't have uh, better moves now uh, there are a lot of weak uh, squares uh, on the on the queen side of the black position so uh, this pawn can be attacked this pawn can be attacked by the king maybe not now maybe not yet because it can be easily defended but uh, in the future that's gonna be a huge weakness we have king on c2 uh, and now bishop on e7 so uh, black want to stay on this diagonal as the knight could jump on g5 and then on e6 this would be you know monster knight with the very beautiful outpost on e6 and this knight would be uh, you know watching at this pawn watching at this pawn and uh, that would be just crashing so uh, magnus thinks okay this bishop has to stay on this diagonal uh, we have king on d3 king c3 and attacking this um, this pawns are not really so easy uh, because they can be defended very easily and the king cannot take them you know uh, alone so uh, we have king on d3 by daniel dubov and now bishop goes back to f3 actually attacking um, the pawn on b2 so we have rook from the first rank to g2 and here again magnus doesn't really have good moves here okay what to play try to exchange the rooks like rook on g7 this is actually blunder knight f6 is losing the game and then uh, if you take the knight then you're gonna take uh, lose the rook so that's uh, losing and of course uh, this way doesn't work as well so what else could be played bishop on e5 then as i said knight g5 and this this knight would be very very beautiful placed so for example uh, rook on g7 knight on e6 now forking the rooks so rook on g4 rook on g4 and this knight already attacks um, c7 uh, attacks f4 uh, twice so black cannot defend uh, everything here so magnus carlsen play h6 creating the weakness on h6 where daniel dubov of course jump immediately so we have rook on g6 uh, bishop on g7 and now rook e6 so knight couldn't jump to e6 but now rook has this beautiful outpost and the rook cannot be attacked by any minor piece only the bishop stays uh, on the dark squares uh, we have king on h7 by magnus carlsen and now knight on c3 knight on c3 simply attacking uh, a4 and it can't really easily be defended it could be defended for example rook on a8 and that would be probably a last chance of magnus carlsen uh, to complicate to spice up the things here uh, for example after rook on g4 uh, black probably would want to stay with the bishop uh, somewhere so bishop on h8 
And here White would have to find some plants to play uh, and uh, it's not easy, okay? So the position is quite locked, so uh, White would have to risk a bit. So there are uh, two ways which which I which I got the ideas. Attack this pawn and this pawn. Uh, attacking this pawn is uh, quite difficult. The bishop can come and defend, so Knight would have to jump, you know, around uh, this way attack the pawn the problem is at the end of the operation the pawn still can move to h5 and all of this effort is gone and uh, black probably would have uh, find something else to play but but it's very difficult for black already to find so maybe that would be the one idea other idea would be for example knight on e2 okay knight on e2 the problem is it's very very double edge so bishop on b2 this is what Magnus Carlsen would probably play and now uh, knight on f4 doesn't work because rook a on f8 with the double attack on the knight and on the pawn that's very nice x-ray here uh, with the check and uh, black could be very very happy here so uh, rook on f4 but this also doesn't work okay rook f4 exchanging the rooks and knight f4 bishop a3 uh, and what white can get to get this pawn is is possible however this pawn would be very fast and uh, it's probably losing so uh, what white would have to play is going back with the knight on c3 so now this bishop uh, is locked there and can't really help here so uh, for example bishop on h3 rook on h4 and now king g7 uh, rook takes on h6 uh, and now the position is pretty good for white with these two rooks coordinated the knight also can jump and help here the rooks can can you know come on the on the seven and six rank king i think king could be in troubles and maybe even some mating ideas could appear there but as you see if not then that would be very very risky so uh, that was the the idea rook on a8 by magnus carlsen and then wait for dubov uh, to play something risky uh, however here magnus carlsen play bishop on c3 which actually uh, actually losing the game because now uh, king on c3 Rook on g7, we have rook on g7, king on g7, rook e7, uh, and it's all done. It's you, you cannot play anything like rook on f7. Rook on f7 is losing because rook f7, king f7, king before now, uh, and then now is the race. King on f6, it looks like white are much better, but it's not much better. You have to calculate very precisely. King on b5, king e5, king c6, a king d4 now, and now king c7, king e3. So as you see, it's not so clear, but actually it's better for white. And now... Uh, king on d6 is possible but king on b6 is more precise much better move and after king f3 c5 c5 and now this position is also uh, very important if you want to you know learn chess uh, in this case actually doesn't matter much but d takes on c5 losing very badly uh, because d6 king g2 and white are just faster okay they are just faster and uh, black doesn't have the queen and never gonna have this queen so uh, not this way after c5 what would have to be played uh, is king on g2 immediately and after c takes on d3 uh, just make this race and yes black could have the queen but actually after d6 white's gonna win it can be long but uh, but white definitely gonna win with so advanced past pawn so uh, it was impossible to play rook on f7 so magnus carlsen knew that and he played king on f6 and now we have rook on c7 rook on e8 so magnus want to be as active with the rooks uh, as possible as this is one of the principles uh, of the rook endings the rooks has to be very very active as active as possible as a defending side or 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 attacking side activity is the key so magnus tries but it's not enough we have rook on d7 a very interesting idea because uh, rook on c6 would also be okay however uh, now magnus carlsen has to choose if he move for example king to e3 to defend the pawn then his rook actually is stuck and cannot be active so uh, magnus goes for activity rook on e3 we have king on d4 rook f3 and now magnus created the past pawn 
uh, we have rook on d6 uh, king has to move king f5 and now rook on b6 so dubov creates two passed pawns uh, and now we have rook on f1 by magnus carlsen rook on b8 now rook d1 with check uh, king c5 and now f3 so uh, the pawn is marching uh, rook on f5 with check king e4 and now d6 Rook on d2, now uh, attacking another pawn to create more passed pawns, as you can't win uh, with, uh, you know, one passed pawn against two passed pawns. So we have king on c3 by Daniel Dubov, rook on h2 creating another passed pawn, but it's not advanced, so it's far, far away. Uh, we have d7, and now rooks go back to d2, uh, and now we have promotion to the queen. So uh, rook takes on d8. Uh, rook takes on d8 and now h5 so uh, magnus push uh, another pawns and now we have c5 so daniel dubov do the same we have h4 king b5 f2 rook on d1 and in this position magnus carlsen actually resigned the game and he resigned he has nothing to do here rook controls all the first rank so uh, for example king on f3 c6 this pawn is just too fast king e2 uh, rook h1 and now that's all he can do okay c7 and the promotion is coming and black are just too slow queen h2 king g1 and white even can take this pawn and uh, and win with these two connected pass pawns so very beautiful game by daniel dubov uh, he won against magnus carlsen uh, he started very well uh, Magnus Carlsen didn't choose, uh, you know, the great opening, uh, but still, you know, uh, Daniel Dubov managed to get as much as he could uh, in this opening and he definitely, you know, make another victory. So I would like to show you the, the final standings after day two. Here we go. Uh, we have Daniel Dubov with eight points, with eight points and Magnus Carlsen seven and a half points. Uh, and then Shahriyar Mamedyarov, uh, Le Kuang Liem. Peter Svidler six and a half points and Anton Korobov six uh, and then other players not really doing great with Alexander Grishuk and David Anton uh, with only four points but somebody has to be at the end of course uh, this is impossible that everybody is winning the every tournament so that's all for today and if you don't want to miss any other games from the Steinitz Memorial uh, press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one